Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. Today I'm going to paint this beautiful main path. It's a quick and easy painting. It took me less than 30 minutes to paint the entire thing, 15 minutes for the video. This is going to be really fun and it's gorgeous. These beautiful balsam firs framing this path leading who knows where. I hope that you find a path like this near you and paint it this weekend. Let's paint. using Arge Rough Press paper in my scroll mop and some cobalt blue and I am just letting the brush dance. I'm having a lot of fun. The background is just some big white fluffy clouds, a little bit of grays from a storm and there's not much to it. I want to keep it very, very simple. So I'm just having some fun and while it's still wet, I'm going to bleed in some greens nickel azo yellow with a little bit of cobalt blue, some quin rust, quinacridone rust, and I'm just having some fun with it. So most of the colors you're going to see repeated. This is nickel azo yellow and it's a nice uh, browny yellow, very warm, and it is very staining. So Make sure that it's only places that you want it because you're not going to be able to change it. And this painting is all about just happy open strokes and playing around with it. We've got the mountains in the distance and just having some fun. This is a very quick painting. Um, I think it took, it was less than an hour, probably about 30 minutes to paint. And the thing about ones like this is block out your time. And this is very important. Take the time, do a really good job. And um, you can't do three things at once. You need to have a little bit of time away from your kids, from work pressures, put your phone to the side, block out 30 minutes, and you would be surprised at what you can do in that amount of time of intense concentration. And you have to have some music that you like dancing to because your brush is going to dance. I'm going into the uh, trees, just a little bit more detail, but frankly, the number six mop is a little bit big for this. So I'm changing to the sable and the sable is if you have to have one brush and one brush only make it a good one it doesn't have to be sable it can be squirrel um, it can be nylon but a number 12 or number 14 round with a really good tip so the natural hairs are going to be able to pick up the um, paint better no they just can't make the synthetic ones quite good enough if you're wanting to do the dry brush and squashy washes and all that sort of thing in the same with the same brush um, they don't have the range so get a really good preferably natural doesn't have to be the super expensive sable brush but the round brush with a really good point is what you need now that being said you can paint with anything you can paint with a stick and if you know what you're doing you're, you can turn out with something absolutely wonderful the brush is not a magic wand it's a useful tool that it's nice to have the nice ones but if you don't don't worry about it keep going paint that's that's your best tool that's going to lead to the best paintings. So just keep on going. Now I've switched to a rigger. Um, this is a number four rigger. So I've been having some fun with that. Um, I wanted just a little bit bigger than my uh, alt one. And this is nice. This is, it gives me the loose strokes, but it's a little bit bigger. It doesn't do the hairlines. It won't be quite as tiny and delicate, but it's really good for the sketchy feel. So I do a lot of that.
So these have interesting little things on the end. So the silhouette of the trees, that's where, that's where it is. Um, what's in the middle of it? Yeah, you know, try to do it the right colors and big bold shapes and that's enough. The edges of the tree, that's what's going to tell you it is a tree and it is, in this case, some main balsam firs. That's how you know it is the edges. So take your time, make sure your paint is, your brush is loaded correctly. This is, I think I'm still using the same colors, uh, quinacridone rust and cobalt and um, a little bit of nickel azo yellow, a little bit of ultramarine, but I'm keeping it pretty light on this one. And just different combinations of those colors make all the colors, all the everything in this painting. So it doesn't take a huge palette. You can do a lot with a limited amount of pigments. That being said, I use everything that I think might possibly work for what I'm doing. See, this is adding a little bit more nickel azo yellow to the mix. Same mix, a little bit more nickel azo yellow. So a little bit yellow or green. Um, I do not ever do the limited palette unless I run out of something and I'm painting plain air somewhere. That's pretty much my only purposefully limited palette, but I do like if you use the same groups of colors, it repeats throughout the painting and it just makes a pleasing combination. It flows nicely. So little bits of the Quinn Rust, that's the red. And I am really playing with the tips, trying to get those exactly right. I do love playing with new brushes and it feels like I've only used um, both my smaller Isabay and the bigger Rigger one a couple paintings and they're, I'm having fun. Love them. You don't need a lot of brushes though. Just that number 12, number 14 round. So a little bit more detail on the edges of those trees. Just a tiny bit. Doesn't take much. You're seeing most of it. The mountain has gotten lost a little bit. I want a bit more detail on, or I want a bit more depth on that. And the edges of the path. See, I'm defining the edges so it's going to pull you into the painting. Paths are wonderful to do. They're wonderful to look at too. So they, they make you feel like, oh, I'm just taking a walk down this lovely main path on the Shudik and it's going to be a wonderful day. Um, or, you know, whatever the circumstances. But the neat thing is, is they pull you in the painting um, and they make you experience it a little bit more. I wanted to continue pulling the frame of the painting around, so a little bit more value, a little darker value on the sky. It's always better to not have it and add a little bit. And this isn't bad because then it kind of reintegrates the tree branches and things like that too. So I don't mind having a little bit of green in there and I, I want it to all flow together. So now the shadows on the path. And I'm using the same four colors, four or five colors because some dashes of the ultramarine blue. Now the shadows are really what's going to give depth to the path. Otherwise, it's, it's just a white line, you know, it doesn't pull you in. But if it's laying flat, that's what makes you want to walk on it. And the shadows do that.
And just some brush action up there. Just very soft, uh, not working with it too much on the background. I want enough to say that, hey, there's a lot of forest back there and there's all these beautiful trees on the side, but I don't want to paint every tree. Just a couple of the treetops will tell me that. Remember, the treetops are going to be hit more from light than the base of the trees. A little bit of negative painting going on there with the grasses where there's the shadow area and the um, sunlit area. And then positive on top of the negative, kind of integrating the two. Integrating seems to be my catchphrase for this painting. And you know, it's not a bad one for this one because it, it should flow together as a whole and it should make you want to walk down that path and be a part of it. some Quinn Rust. And just some dashes of that red. Maybe it's red flowers. Maybe it's dried grass. You can't really tell and it doesn't actually matter. It's just a little bit of color. Just keep, keep moving your brush around. Have fun. That dancing music is going, right? I mean, you want to have fun with this one. Pretty much all of them, really. What's the point otherwise? Just dashing the rigor around. Have some fun with it. Um, just really play with the rigor or whatever brush that you're using and you're not, you're painting the negative space mostly because you're looking at those big clumps of grass. You're not trying to paint every single tree here or every single grass blade. You're painting the idea and just enough that you know what's there. And that's really all that's important is you need to know what's there. So a little bit more dark in there so it, it stops you at the end of the path. But I want some lights because I want you to want to walk down it. Some rocks over on the side, not really fussing much with those. Finger painting has to happen in every painting. bit more shadows there. Finish off this tree and since this is in the center it was one of the last things I did. A little bit more detail up there and some of the others. is it. I hope this inspires you to paint a path near you or this main path sometime this weekend and I hope that you have a really good time painting. Thank you very much for watching this video and for being a part of this channel. I really appreciate y'all. If you want more information, more color names and all that sort of thing, it's on my website paintingwatercolor.com. Happy painting!